What's up guys? We got some interesting things coming up with the quality of life roadmap. And especially in the near future, we are gonna get the epic empowerment. It's not in game yet, but it has been announced and it's already in test server. So some people are getting access to it already and we can see the numbers. Not quite yet me, but um, that's gonna come very soon. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be literally next week in the corner of uh, Raid. And let's talk a little bit about the implications of Epic Empowerment. I kind of wanted to talk about it from a little bit different perspective, because I'm sure everybody's gonna say their own opinions about it. And I have never done a uh, like top top. Um, I have done a tier list, but I have de never done like top five or top ten videos or anything like that. Today I'm gonna make. Uh, my list of top 10 epics, no, top 5 epics for PvP after the empowerment, and they shouldn't come as a massive surprise to anybody. But let's first take a quick look at, about the stats that you get with the epic empowerment. Like I mentioned, I don't have access to the test server yet, and these are not in game, only in test server right now, but we got these images from Nup's video. And on the first picture, we have the stats that you get as empowerment for legendary and primal champions. I guess, I mean, I guess they're different. I, legendary, whatever, mythic champions, whatever. But for epic champions, um, it's a little bit less, but I'm actually kind of surprised that it's not that much more, um, not that much less than this. Basically, on the main stats like attack, HP and defense, you're still getting 40% at plus 4. And it's obviously way easier to get epic champions at plus 4. The, the biggest difference is that basically you get less resistance and um, accuracy and then speed, crit damage and crit rate. But even them, like, if we, if we are being honest, probably not too many people have plus 4 on nukers, and you actually get the 30% crit damage and 10% crit rate, it's not that easy to pull off. You might be able to pull it off on a couple champions, but um, chances are not on the ones that you most want to do it. And at least on epics it will be fairly reasonable to actually be able to go for the full plus 4. And I guarantee you, if we got epic empowerment, on the release of the normal empowerment, epics would have gone rampant even in Platinum Arena. They were actually used quite a bit even back then, or specifically back then, and I have talked about it in a couple videos recently. But probably the biggest change for all players isn't really gonna be PvP. The most practical sense is that you need a lot of epic champions in Gerst City right now. If I quickly show you show you my map, I have been kind of lazing it around and finishing the normal, so I haven't gone for full completion on the hard one in this rotation yet. But for example, the S8 room is generally a hard one, and just lots of rooms where you need, or you can only use epic champions or epics and rares like this one. So you will definitely get tons of use out of this since you will get all of the stats, like resistance and accuracy even can be very impactful here because you might be able to resist many of these rooms, like with the level 230 opponents, they are not gonna have that much accuracy, so it will be a lot more reasonable to be able to actually resist these rooms, and that's probably was Plarium's plan all along. They, they always do this, which is super frustrating, that they release something utterly broken that completely shatters the meta, but they have already created the countermeasure against it, and they're just revealing it on a big delay. Good example would be that they released like Cupidus buff and bolster set, and 
Gupidos was used both in offense and defense in Classic Arena, and there was really no good 100% um, win rate way to really farm good Gupidos defense teams because they had massive shields with bolster and reaction, and you could beat them, but it often wasn't even 100% win ratio with pretty much any type of team. But then, then we got the Baron buff and. Baron instantly demolished all of the Cupidos teams, even if they had like 200k shields or whatever. And then, some months after that, we get Harima and Baron gets completely gutted and so on. But this has been tried and true strategy that Plarium has always been doing. I wouldn't be surprised if, when the Empowerment originally was released, they had already planned Curse City. And that's why they didn't want to do Epic Empowerment, because they wanted to release it after that. But because of Cursed City, you basically will want to empower any Epic Champion. You're not gonna want to really use them as chickens right now. You definitely want to empower pretty much anything that you have, especially if you already have it ranked to level 60. But even if there's a chance that you might want to use that in some secret room in, uh, not secret room, on any of the rooms in Curse City. Of course you can use epics in secret rooms and Hydra as well, but those are kind of the old content that is more solved. And getting a little bit crit damage and crit rate on your Royal Guard or whatever, it's nice, but it's not really that big deal anymore. But if we quickly go back to the stats, as I mentioned before, they are quite substantial, since you're getting like 40% HP and defense. Everything else is good, but basically all of your epics are getting a lot more tankiness. I think that probably favors tanks or utility champions a bit more. But of course, getting a little bit more damage on your nukers is not a small thing, especially when there is still a couple pretty good epic nukers. Now, like I mentioned before, if we got the epic em empowerment a few years back, I guarantee you that you would have seen epics in the top tier ladder of Classic Arena. Right now, I'm not really thinking that it's gonna happen, but it's definitely gonna be useful in <laughs> back team arena and just progressing in the game in PvP. There's maybe one epic that actually maybe some brave people might use, but let's actually get to my list and <laughs> talk about the top 5 epic champions that I want to highlight with the empowerment. And we're gonna start off with probably these might be the two most used epics in PvP. They have been used since the day one of raid, and actually, funnily enough, I used to have a couple accounts that I started when I started playing raid and I chose this account instead of the other two because this account got one of those epics and the rank 4 and 5 on my list is of course going to be Sinesha and Skull Crown. Not there's so many good nukers nowadays with George and Narses and other options, all of the primal nukers and so on. The old blender comp has kind of been out of the favor, but it's still so good. I often get some couple guys that are always shilling for the blender team in my discord. You definitely can win even in gold for live arena with blender. And outside of these two nukers, getting more damage now with the buff. But blender has kind of gotten indirect buff recently with Mikage, because the old blender comp used to be that you run Arbiter for the turn meter boost and attack boost, and then you have one ally attack champion and Sinessa and Skull Crown. But now, since you do have Mikage that does both attack buff and ally attack, you kind of have more options. You could basically run anything as the third champion. It could be a lockout, it could be a turn meter booster, it could be a second ally attack champion or 
it could even be something like Armands, but even if you're not using Blender in top Platinum Arena, which I think probably some people will run just as a meme, because I think you might be able to pull it off, especially with Mikage, but Blender is definitely going to be very good in Tag Team Arena if you want to climb there, and obviously, I mean, it goes without saying, both of these champions are very good in Cursed City as well, so those are gonna be on your priority list to empower, and I would say that not only, like, of course you should empower them, but you might even consider changing your teams in Tag Team Arena, because like I mentioned, Lady Mikage is so good with them nowadays, and you will get even more damage with them, and you could even run some niche strat strategies with Mikage and Sinesa and Skullcrone, that maybe, I mean, Mikage does have the ally attack on the first form and not the second form, but you might even be able to, like, get away and run it against some lockout teams if you can, like, go to the stun form on Mikage, and then rotate the cooldowns and get back to the first form. But since they both do their main damage with A1, if the enemy team is maybe some kind of style team with like lockout and not a lot of damage, or some other way that you can survive, you definitely can run the blender comps against some lockout teams in Tag Team Arena. But that's something to consider. Okay, while we're at it, the rank 3 champion on my epic empowerment arena tier list is also gonna be another Knight Revenant champion, Rector. Somebody that I have personally used a lot in Platinum Arena, obviously not in the recent times. Rector is basically like a mini Duchess, and she used to be paired with Duchess and Candy back in the day when Candy was top tier arena defense nuker because she is a reviver that does fail and kind of synergizes with Candy. And she has always been kind of a free-to-play Duchess that even to this day people do use her a lot in Tag Team Arena specifically, but also any cursed rooms that you might be able to use her, she's definitely worth gearing just for that. But um, her base stats are pretty low, and she does scale her heal a little bit with the max HP. So not only are, are you gonna be more tanky, and faster and more accuracy and resist and so on, all of which will be great in Curse City, but you will also get a little bit more heal, so... I would definitely keep her specifically as somebody that you might want to prioritize more than you used to, since you're gonna get so much more stats that Maybe you actually want to use Rector over Elva or something, but that's something to consider. I think I have my Rector um, downgraded from the past, but I think she's in some kind of uh, decent Swiftberry set, yeah. Still good for Curse City, I could definitely buff this up, but she is kind of a secondary champion for me. But as far as Epic goes, she's obviously well above average and actually very good champion. Like I mentioned, she used to be a Platinum Arena tier champion at the time of her release and actually for a good while after that. And then the last two champions on my tier list, neither one of these should surprise anybody, but I think especially the rank uh, 2 is gonna maybe have a little he might actually see a little bit use in Platinum Arena. I'm not gonna guarantee you that, but I feel like he is in kind of unique position right now. It's obviously gonna be Wokot. Now, Wokot is a one-trick pony. I mean, he does technically have like taunt and other effects, but the main thing that you only really care about him for PvP is his passive that heals all allies by 50% of the damage that he takes, and this is of course very strong, but if you get one-shotted and everybody dies anyway before they get healed, it's not gonna be that great, though it can be incredibly good 
both at basically chasing any type of boss that does AoE damage, but in Tag Team Arena specifically, there's all kinds of teams like Lockout and AoE damage, but maybe they don't have the highest damage output. Some type of tanky teams that are not like uh, super high damage and lots of like maybe something like like um, Arix teams or uh, lockout teams that are tanky or maybe even Bender, but those types of teams where you actually are not getting one-shotted by their AoE is gonna be super good. And obviously, if he gets more base stats, then he's harder to kill and more chances that um, you will be able to take multiple AoE hits and style the fight. I used to use him for a very long time in Tag Team Arena. It's not that long time ago since I stopped using him because, like I said, he's very good at chasing some specific teams. Actually, I think I got multiple videos about Wokot in Tag Team Arena from my early days on YouTube. But an interesting point in the current Classic Arena meta, and obviously this applies to Tag Team Arena as well, but White King Narses is the most used nuker by far. Like, it's literally the best nuker for Classic Arena. Maybe not, like, in Live Arena it's not quite like that, because there's other nukers that are, let's say, more safe or bigger counters against specific matchups. But if you're just... If you know what kind of teams you're already facing and what are the biggest stallers, Narsus is basically the biggest stall breaker. You can't run shields or strengthen because he's gonna ignore them and do double hit. And there's not much really you can you can run anymore because of him. You can only use stone skin and maybe marriage capacity or have fast teams with lots of CC. But you can't really out tank Narsus since he does have the effect on his A2. Not only does he do the double hit that hits hard and ignore shields and strengthen, but also the passives that mitigate damage, like Dutch's passive and so on. But it's still not gonna ignore Wokot passive, he is gonna heal. And if you're not running any shield set on your team, and you only take one hit from Narses, you should definitely be able to take one hit of the double hit. And if you only take one hit because you don't have shield, then Wokot is gonna be actually pretty useful there. He's gonna heal your team and it's gonna be pretty annoying for a Narses team to deal with you. And I will definitely consider running Wokot against Narses teams in Tag Team Arena, for instance, as long as you make sure that you don't have any shields on your team. Could we max maybe actually find a fight with um, Narses and test this out and practice? Obviously, these are not gonna be easy teams. Okay, that team looks fine. Yeah, let, let's try this one. Uh, let me show my gear, I guess, first. I, I haven't, like... I haven't put my best gear on Vogot or anything like that, but he still does have some uh, some leftover gear because he's fairly good in like Curse City and Doom Tower and so on. I do use him. This is by far not my best gear. You, you can easily get without the empowerment. If you have insanely good gear, you can get like 130k HP. Cl closer to that is what I used to have on him when I was running him. With the empowerment though, since the only thing you really care about on him is HP, you, you can get a lot of that. You, you don't want speed, you don't really need anything else about apart from HP. You don't necessarily even want to go too hard on defense, but I wouldn't like avoid defense. But um, yeah, the, okay, if the Narsus hits super hard, maybe he can one shot my Vogot, but I think I should be able to take a hit. Let's see, he, he does have. 6 star blessing though, it might get really close. Okay, let's see. If he one shots me, then I'm gonna... Maybe I'll put better gear on him just to show on video. But I guarantee you, if you put good gear on him, 
and especially if you have him empowered but even outside of that you should be able to take a Narsus hit even if he's well geared okay I, I mean I could um, I could just reduce his turn meter but I want to get nuked by Narsus so let's not do that okay so he did one shot us I got the swift parry proc I guess this is a well geared one but his damage is gonna be on the borderline of being able to kill your team, so... Um, let's try it again. I want to see if he does it twice, but I guarantee you this will work even against really strong ones like this with Empowerment. If you put your good gear on Vogot or have Empowerment. And um, especially against the lesser ones. The one thing that Narthus kind of ha has issue with is that if the enemy doesn't have shield or strengthen, he often might not have high enough damage. And of course, you could take this much further. Like, let's say that you want to cheese some teams in... Okay, yeah, now we survived it. So I guess this probably was without Helm Smasher proc and we got pretty good heal. But if you were stack, if you were to stack this with something like Harima passive, we, we would basically be full HP at this point. So... It's definitely something to um, consider and and uh, work on. Not sure if it's actually gonna take over the like top twenty platinum arena. Probably not, but I think for most accounts, Wokot empowerment is actually a good thing. Like I mentioned. All of the champions on the list, <laughs> because you need to have epic champions on Curse City, they are kind of going to double dip that you're going to get very big use out of them in Tag Team Arena and Curse City, but you might even be able to do some classic arena even in Platinum against some weaker teams if you really need to, or if you just want to flex with your uh, Blender or something like that. Anyway, and the last champion on the epic PvP empowerment tier list is obviously gonna be Gala. Now, Gala is a little bit um, out of the meta right now, but Gala damage is actually insane. I mean, if you haven't, if you don't know, if I haven't mentioned it enough, but all of my uh, top three finishes are with actually one of them is not. 3 out of 4 of my top 3 finishes are with Kala. Her damage is insane. The issue is her ability. But she does way more damage than even Rotos. And she has kind of unique kit that every single ability that she has actually has built-in ignore defense. All 3 abilities. And not only do they have ignore defense, but they actually have quite good multipliers. Unlike Rotos who does have pretty good, pretty low multipliers, but she kind of has very specific conditions that the A3 only um, only gives you extra turn after the attack if you are full HP, but if you're able to pull that off, then you're doing a massive triple hitter and getting an extra turn, and on the A2, she will only ignore 50% of enemy defense if you have a shield buff, but in Tag Team Arena, for instance, you often, since you can choose what teams that you fight, maybe you run Gala against a team with single target nukers, and you have shield set or something like that. She can go hard in town and destroy enemy teams, and especially now with the increased stats, her damage wasn't the problem before. She's still one of the highest consistent DPS champions if you're not talking about like like some kind of percentage damage against bosses their damage is still crazy it's just about the survivability but <clears throat> but she's absolutely gonna wreck in both tag team arena and classic arena so you definitely want to consider her and she's one of those champions i don't have super high hopes that any of the other ones on the list are ever gonna be used in top tier Platinum Arena again. But if there is a meta where people are running some types of teams where 
you can avoid the damage somehow. Gala might actually still be relevant at some point because, like I mentioned, her damage is actually insanely hard. Like if we quickly take a look at the multipliers, the A3 has a multiplier of 1.6, but it hits uh, three times, so it's a multiplier of 4.8, and that's with 25% of ignore defense. It, it is a massive damage. It uh, used to be able to one-shot duchesses, and then you get an extra turn with this skill. It's way bigger than you think if you haven't used Gala. It, it is often enough to just kill a very tanky champion by itself. And then the A2 has a multiplier of 4.7 and 50% ignore defense, meaning that it also will one-shot very tanky builds. Like you can do you can do like 150k plus damage on this skill. And even the A1 does have 30% ignore defense with multiplier of 3.4 being a double hit. It's not as high as the other two skills, but it still does hit very hard and sometimes she can even work against teams that where you're locked out against them and so on. But yeah, maybe it doesn't come as a surprise that some of the epics are gonna be good and you want to empower them. Chances are that you were gonna empower every epic anyway, but especially these five epics for PvP, I would keep an extra note for, make sure to empower them and use them. And yeah, of course, epic empowerment is gonna be super good thing. I know I have been maybe kind of extra positive lately, because I liked some upcoming updates and the quality of ro uh, life roadmap and so on. Maybe I'm chilling a little bit too hard for Plarium. I'm not really trying to do that, I'm just trying to be... Uh, Trying to say what I think, but I'm excited for the epic empowerment. I think it will help a lot of players. Sure, maybe it's another way to monetize and get people to buy shards to get epics that they already use as chicken many times, but better late than ever, definitely gonna use it and you should use the epics as well. That's it, if you got any questions or comments then put them down below. That's it for this video, have a nice day and see ya.